Welcome back to Robot Geek 101. Today we're going to talk about PWM, that's pulse width modulation. So we've already looked at digital outputs like our LEDs and digital inputs like push buttons. We've even looked at analog inputs like this knob here. But what about analog outputs? Now, the Arduino and Geekduino don't actually have a true analog output. That means that they can only generate 0 volts or 5 volts, and without additional circuitry, they can't generate arbitrary volts like 1, 2, 3, 4 volts. What the Arduino can do, however, is generate a PWM signal. That's that pulse width modulation I was talking about. And really, PWM is just a fancy way of saying turning a pin on and off at a really fast rate. By varying how long the pin is on or off, you can vary the amount of power that goes out to a device, and you can sort of approximate an analog output. So we're going to visualize this using our logic analyzer, and that's what we've got plugged in here. You don't actually need one of these to do all of these lessons. We're just going to use this to show you some of the signals. So don't worry about this analyzer and the probes plugged in at the three points. What you will need is your Geekduino with your sensor shield. Here I've got it mounted to this nice workbench. I've also got two LEDs mounted and a single rotational knob. You do want to use LEDs, but you can use any of your analog inputs that you'd like. I'm powering the Geekduino with my 5 volts. So let's take a look at our Arduino IDE. Go to File. Sketchbook, Robot Geek Sketches, RG101, and let's go to an old Lesson 01 digital output. We're going to go to this D, blink with const variables. We're just going to start blinking the LED. So we have our constant integers defining our pin and our delay time. And let's go ahead and change these. So we're going to change the digital output pin to 3. And that's because this LED is on pin 3. It'll be important that it's on pin 3 later. I'm going to make this fast, this delay a little bit faster. So we'll do a delay of 100. Let's go ahead and upload. We've already made sure that our board is the correct board. Our serial port is picked correctly. We're all hooked up. So now that we are done uploading, we can see our LED blinking. So let's zoom in on that. As you can see, our LED is blinking very quickly at a rate of being on 100 milliseconds and off for 100 milliseconds. So this is where the logic analyzer is going to come handy. That's that little black box I had hooked up to some of the pins. So this channel 0 is hooked up to pin number 3. I'm going to go ahead and read some data. And I'm going to have to zoom a little bit. But you're going to start seeing these pulses. These pulses represent the LED being on or off, or that pin being on and off. So whenever you've got your pulse up here, that's 5 volts, and down here is 0 volts. You can think of the pulse sort of like your pulse of your heartbeat. The up and down, but um but um but um So as you can see here, 0.1 second. Or if I go from here to here, that's going to be 100 milliseconds on, 100 milliseconds off, just like we expected. Now, if I go back to the code and change this to 1 for the delay time, I'm basically telling the LED to blink at a rate of 1 millisecond. One of the things is that this is going to be so fast that the human eye can't even detect it. So the LED is going to look like it's just on. But if I read from the logic analyzer and zoom in a little bit, I'm going to see the LED is indeed going on and off, on and off, at a rate of one millisecond. So this is pretty fast, but we're going to get even faster to achieve PWM. So let's go back to Arduino, go File. Sketchbook, Robot Key Sketches, RG101, 04PWM, Manual PWM. So what Manual PWM is going to do 
is going to allow us to create our own PWM signals using writes and delays. The Arduino hardware has built-in PWM channels, and that's usually what we're going to use for PWM, but this is going to be a good lesson to show you how PWM works. Sometime this is called bit banging, and that's because you're manually changing each bit or each pin. So we have our constant integers for our PWM LED. That's going to be this LED right here, number three. We have our static LED, number five. We're going to use this as a control so we can, we can tell the difference of brightness. Our cycle time, 1000, is from the time the LED starts until the end of the LED being off. So over here, our cycle is two milliseconds because we had it on for one millisecond and off for one millisecond. So in this case, it's going to be a thousand microseconds. And we'll talk a little bit about why it's microseconds in a, in a minute here. On time is the amount of time it'll be on. So here, our on time was one millisecond. Here, our on time is 500 microseconds. So in this case, our off time is going to be 500 microseconds as well. But this allows us to change this on time really quickly and have our overall cycle stay at 1,000. We have our pin modes for our PWM LED and our static LED just as we would normally. We have them both set to outputs. And then we're digital writing our static LED to high. Again, this is going to be our control. And it's going to be what allows us to see the difference in brightness. So this block is going to look a lot like our blink code. We've got our digital writes, our PWM LED, the LED we want to control, number three. We've got it set high and low, but now we're using delay microseconds. And delay microseconds acts just like delay, only instead of taking in milliseconds, it takes in microseconds. Like I said, PWM is really, really fast, so we need to use delay microseconds to achieve the PWM signals correctly. So on time, again, is 500 microseconds. Then delay microseconds will be that 1,000 minus 500 to get the off time. In this case, it should be 500 microseconds, so let's go ahead and load it up. Once this is uploaded, you're actually going to see a difference between our LED 5 at full brightness and our LED 3, which is at half brightness. If we take a look at our logic analyzer, we're going to see 0.5 milliseconds. So we are running at that rate where we've got 500 microseconds, that's 0.5 milliseconds, on, then 0.5 milliseconds, 500 microseconds, off. And we're just keeping that pulse. But up, but up, but up. So, as you might have guessed, pulse width modulation mainly deals with changing the width of this on time, this pulse. So, by changing how far this pulse goes into the cycle, we can change the brightness of the LED. So let's change on time to 100. That's 10% of the full cycle. As you can see here, we only have a very faint light from the LED. If we take a look at our logic analyzer, this pulse is very thin compared to before. We've got just this 10% of the pulse on, and then 90% of the time it's off. So this LED is flashing at this pulse, almost like a strobe light. It's just so fast that your brain interprets it as this much, much softer light. Let's bring this up to 900. So it's going to be on for 90% of the time. As you can see here, we've got an inverse where it's off for only 10%, on for 90% of the time. And the brightnesses are actually very close together. This one is flashing so quickly that it seems pretty close to full brightness. 
as you can guess, if we were to change this to 1000, go ahead and upload it, once we read it in our logic analyzer, it's going to look identical to our channel 1. And it's not quite identical because we are turning off for just a little tiny interval that has to do with the way the code switching works and the amount of time it takes to go from this digital write to the delay microseconds. But from afar, it's pretty close. They're both staying up at high for almost 100% of the time, and our brightnesses look just about identical. So now that we've manually set our PWM signals with digital write, we're going to see how to do it using built-in analog functions in the Arduino environment. Let's go to File, Sketchbook, Robot Geek Sketches, RG101, PWM, A2 Hardware PWM. Now one thing is for this demonstration, because of speeds and some internals going on with the Arduino, we're going to have to move our pins over a little. So pin 5, this inner pin will stay at pin 5, but this guy we're going to move from pin 3 to pin 6. So now it's plugged into pin 6, we can keep looking, we've got our constant integers defining pins 5 and 6. We're going to use a PWM value, 128 and 255, and we'll explain exactly why these values are the way they are in a minute. Just like before, we're setting our pin modes. We'll be using this analog write function, and you'll notice two things. One is analog write is different from the digital write that we were using before. You'll also notice that there's nothing in loop. That's because analog write is going to do all of the work that we were doing in loop before. So, analog write, like digital write, has two parameters, a pin and a value. So the pin is just a normal pin like before, LED1 is 5, LED2 is 6. Then we have PWM value. Instead of a high or a low, we're going to have a value between 0 and 255. 0 is analogous to 0% duty cycle, or low, as if the pin was off at 0 volts. 255 is analogous to a 100% duty cycle, or 5 volts, that's a high. So this is nice because any value in between will be a fraction. So for example, 128, halfway between 0 and 255, is 50% of the duty cycle, or half power. Now 0 to 255 might seem like a weird value. The PWM timer actually has 8 bits. So each of these zeros represents a bit. And if I turn all of the bits on, on the first 8, I get 255. So this 8-bit timer has all these values between 0 and 255. So when I analog write LED 1, pin 5, 128, I'm giving it a 50% duty cycle. The cycle will be on half the time. And I give LED 2 value of 255, it'll be on all the time. So let's go ahead and upload this. We'll see our two LEDs, our pin 5, which is at 128, or half cycle, is a little bit dimmer than our pin 1, which is 255 at full cycle. So let's take a look at our logic analyzer. As you can see, pin 5 is on channel 0, and it's on half the time. So we've got a period of about 1 millisecond, and for 0.5 milliseconds, or 500 microseconds, we're on, and then we're off for 0.5 milliseconds, or 500 microseconds whereas pin 6 is just on all the time. And again, that's because pin 6, LED 2, has a value of 255. So let's change these values a little bit. Let's bring pin 5 down all the way to 15. And let's try 200 for our value 2, our pin 6.
Once we're uploaded, we'll notice pin 5 is very, very faded. Pin 6 is reasonably bright. Let's take a look at our logic analyzer. So as you can see, just like we'd expect, pin 5 has a very short pulse width. Pin 6 has a much longer pulse width. But you will notice something interesting. That the periods match up perfectly. So let's roll this over a little bit. Right here, the two start at the same time, and they end at the same time. The only difference between them is the amount of time they're on for each pulse. As you zoom out, you can see a little bit better how this signal is on for so much longer than this signal. And before we move on, we're going to min move that probe and pin back to pin 3 from pin 6. So unplug pin 6, plug it into pin 3. So let's go to File, Sketchbook, Robot Geek Sketches, RG101, PWM, B, Fade Up. This sketch is going to fade the LED from nothing, not being on at all, to full brightness. So we have our pin number three. That's this pin on the outer edge. Our fade amount is five. And this is the amount that we're going to change each time we loop through. We're setting our pin mode to output for LED pin. And now we're using analog write. So zero is a 0% duty cycle, or basically telling the LED to be off. And 255 is 100% duty cycle, or on. So in this case, I'm going to start by writing it zero, since my PWM value defaults to zero. Then I'm going to increase my PWM value by that fade amount. Again, I have it set to 5. Now, I need to make sure that if this PWM value goes larger than 255, that I reset it. And that's where I'm going to use this IF clause. This is one of the logic statements that you'll use in programming. Basically, it, what happens is that this IF will evaluate whatever's in these parentheses. And if what is in here is true, then it will execute the code within the brackets. So when we first start, PWM value will be 0. We'll check. Is PWM value greater than 255? No, it's not. So we'll skip this. The next time, PWM value will be 5. Is 5 greater than 255? No. So we'll skip this. We'll keep going all the way until we get to 255. Is PWM greater or equal to 255? Yes. Once it is, we'll reset PWM value back to 0. So the next time it'll go up to 5. Here we have a delay, and we can vary this delay so that we can see the fade at different rates. This 50 milliseconds is a pretty good delay to have it at. So let's go ahead and upload our code. And once we're done uploading, we should see this LED slowly going from zero all the way to full brightness, then coming back to zero as we reset at PWM value. So let's take a look at our logic analyzer. I'm going to scroll a little bit. So here you can see it's starting where our pulse being high is very short. It's about 40 microseconds. Then our pulse is going to start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, this cycle is always going to be 2 milliseconds. But the pulse width is going to increase. So here I've got 1.4 milliseconds, I've got 0.6 milliseconds being on, but still my 2 millisecond for my entire pulse. So I keep going. Got a full 1 millisecond for my pulse being high, but 2 milliseconds for my cycle. And 
and you can see this pulse just getting thicker and thicker until it's getting almost all the way up to two milliseconds. If I were to record this for longer, you would actually see it get to that full two milliseconds for a very brief period of time. Now, if I really wanted, I could have recreated this using delay microseconds and digital writes, but this PWM hardware, as you can imagine, makes this a lot easier to deal with. And since the PWM is doing all the hardware work for you, you don't have to worry about the rest of your code. These PWM channels will get set and will stay there until you change them. Now, one caveat is that you're limited on the number of PWM pins that you can use analog write with. Analog write will work with any of the six pins in the PWM column on the sensor shield. So that's pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. If you try to use PWM on, say, pin 12, nothing's going to happen. You might get 0 or 1, depending on exactly what you try to write to it, but it is not going to act like this pulse. So now let's take a look at the next sketch. We're going to go to File, Sketchbook, Robot Geek Sketches, RG101, PWM, Analog In, PWM Out. So in this sketch, we are going to use our analog pin, 0, connected to our analog sensor, in this case our rotational knob. We've got our LED on pin 3 our analog sensor value as an integer and our PWM value as an integer. We've set our pin mode for the LED to output. We're going to read the analog sensor value and remember that's going to be 0 to 1023. Now here's where we've got a little bit of a problem because remember analog write is expecting a value from 0 to 255 but we've got a value from 0 to 1023 in our analog sensor value. That's where the map function comes in really handy. The map function is a linear function that will map from one range of values to another. So in this case, I have my analog sensor value, and that's my input. Then these two parameters are my input ranges, input low to high. So remember 0 to 1023, that 10-bit range for our analog sensor. Then we have our output mapping range from 0 to 255 so this is for our PWM so for example if I put in a 0 for my analog sensor 0 maps to 0 if I were to put in 1023 1023 maps to 255 if I were to go halfway on my analog sensor and get 512 it would be mapped halfway between 0 and 255 or 128 so now I am going to take my analog write function, write to my LED, that new PWM value that I got via this map function. Let's go ahead and upload it. As you can see, as I turn this knob, my LED is going to fade, much like it did in the last example. Here at full brightness, I have full 5 volts. Here I have 0. So let's bring it to about halfway. Go back to our logic analyzer. Much as we'd expect for our two millisecond pulse, half of it for one millisecond, we are on. Let's bring our LED really low just so we barely see a light. Do another logic analyzer, and we've got a very tiny pulse here, down all the way to 32 microseconds. Now if we go to File, Sketchbook, Robot Geek Sketches, RG101, PWM, Analog In, PWM Out Serial, the code is going to be very similar. Let's go ahead and upload it to the board first. We've got all our pins, our sensor values, but we're going to start using our serial prints again, and we're going to print the raw value and the mapped value. So 
So as you can see here, if I go all the way to zero, I have zero for both my analog value and my PWM. Bring it up to full brightness, I have 1023 for my raw value and 255 for my PWM. If I go about halfway, let's try to get close to 512. We're going to get right around 128. That's halfway between 0 and 255. And basically, any point in between, we've just got a linear mapping from between our 0 to 1023 on our analog value to our 0 to 255 for our PWM. If you're interested in looking more in a PWM, we've got a couple of more examples you can look over, but this will give you everything you need to know to get into our Robot Geek Experimenters kits and the basic robot kits. If you're interested in playing more with logic analyzers, we were using the Sali logic analyzer. There are also a lot of nice oscilloscopes out there. Oscilloscopes will give you live feedback. And they're really great ways to learn about low-level protocols and how electronics work. Make sure to check out our next video where we're going to talk about servos. And servos work on a very similar pr principle to PWM. We're going to be changing the width of a pulse, but we're going to use a servo library instead of the analog writes. So make sure to check out that video, and we'll see you next time.